Welcome to Amanda Chats. <laughs> um, today I'm going to do the top 10 reasons I love being Catholic. Because I'm Roman Catholic, if you didn't know. And I love it. My faith is so important to me. So I'm going to share that with all of you. Also, this list is not in really any order. I just wrote them down as I thought of them. And thinking about it, um, yeah, some of them should have moved up a little bit higher, so I'll let you know when I get to them which ones go up. And yes, I have my Bible. Great Bible, by the way. One of the bestest ever. Good Bible. Okay, so are you ready for the 10 things I love about being Roman Catholic? Number one, the church was founded by Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that. The Roman Catholic Church was founded by Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you want the scripture reference, it's Matthew 16, 17. Uh, and Jesus said to Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. He wasn't talking in metaphors here. He was saying like, you know, church. I'm going to build my church with you. And this leads right into number two of why I love being Roman Catholic because there's the Pope. The Pope is the successor of St. Peter. And this comes from the same Bible verse. You are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The, the way that this happens is if you look back into the Old Testament, the Davidic king had a steward that he left in charge when he was going to be leaving for a little bit. And the steward would be in charge until the king returned. Well, that steward was Peter. And the successor of Peter was the next Pope, and onward and onward up to Pope Francis. So we have an unbroken line of Popes. I mean, they haven't all been great Popes, but they've all been Popes. Hmm. Okay, number three is, this one probably dis doesn't make most people's lists of things they love about being Catholic, but it makes mine because I love the Book of Sirach. So number three, the Book of Sirach. Okay, if you're a Protestant, you probably don't have this book in your Bible, but you should because it's awesome and I'm going to tell you why. So the Book of Sirach, the Book of Sirach, pretty awesome, right? The Book of Sirach. It's not really too long of a book. It's only got 51 chapters. They're not long chapters, don't worry. It's not a hard book to get through. So I want to tell you why I like the Book of Sirach so much. So it starts with... The first verse of the entire book is, All wisdom comes from the Lord and remains with Him forever. That's amazing! The whole book's going to be about wisdom and practical tips and just advice for growing in wisdom and piety and also some other, like, you know, hmm, maybe you should think about this if you want to grow in wisdom. Such as the beginning of chapter 2, verse 1 says, My son, if you come forward to serve the Lord, Prepare yourself for temptation. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, and Sirach is right up front with it and says, Hey people, this isn't going to be an easy thing. If you want to grow in wisdom, you've got to work for it. But my favorite part of, well, one of my favorite parts of the book of Sirach is in chapter 6, especially verse 14, where they start talking about what makes a good friend and how to be a good friend. And Sirach writes, a faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He that has found one has found a treasure. And there's practical tips about how to be a good friend, how to know if your friend's a good friend, how to choose good friends. Friendship, very important. And plus, you know, helps you grow in wisdom and all that. Great book for growing in wisdom and piety. Okay, now number four. This is where I said they weren't exactly in like the right order because this really should be number one, but it's number four. The real presence of the Eucharist. Let's say this again. Jesus is really present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. He is there, like, physically present. And it's amazing! And you might be going, uh-huh, show me where that is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So open your Bibles to John chapter 6. I'm going to start with verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man 
give us his flesh to eat. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. So is Jesus speaking in just metaphors here? Is it just symbolism? Let's see what happens next. Go to verse 60. Many of the disciples, when they heard it, said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? If it was just a symbol, would it be a hard saying? Hmm. If it was just a symbol, would Jesus come in and be like, Hey, hey, sorry guys. I didn't mean it for real. Just a symbol. Just a symbol. Okay, just a symbol. But this is what Jesus says, starting in verse 61. Do you take offense at this? Then what if you, you were to see the Son of Man ascending as he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, the flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. He didn't make apologies for what he said. He said, the words I speak are spirit and life. They're true. And then, this is the part that always gets me. At verse 67, he says, Jesus said to the twelve, Will you also go away? He was willing to let the twelve walk away from him if they didn't believe him in this. Okay, people. He was willing to have his best friends walk away from him if they did not believe him. And that's what really gets me if he was willing to let the twelve walk away from him if they didn't believe that his body would be true food and his blood would be true drink, then why am I doubting it? So, real presence, I love it. Which leads me to all of the sacraments of the church. I love the seven sacraments. We have baptism, confirmation, first holy communion. Then there's anointing of the sick, confession, uh, holy matrimony, and holy orders. I love them all. I love being able to receive Jesus, body and blood, soul and divinity. It's just, it blows my mind. And I love the sacraments of confession. We all fail. No one's perfect. If anyone tells you they're perfect, they're lying. Okay, let's say this again. If anyone tells you they're perfect, they are lying. No one is perfect. We all make mistakes, and that's what the sacrament of confession is for, to bring us back into God's family, which is pretty awesome. Okay, number six. Number six is just the saints. The saints are examples of holy, devout people who have gone before us. They're somebody whose example we can follow. And they're also intercessors. Oh, I just, the saints are amazing. They inspire me every day to just be a better person because if they can do it, I can do it. If they can go through all of the crap they went through in their lives and still believe that God loves them and they're gonna serve God to the best of their abilities, why can't I? I have no excuses when it comes down to what some of these saints went through. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Number seven, the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's just it, the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is not only the mother of Jesus, she's our mother. At the foot of the cross, Jesus gave her to John, and in John, the whole church, all believers. Oh my goodness, just, she's our mother too. Who else knows Jesus the best? Jesus is known best by his mother. He lived with her for 30 years. Having Our Lady is my mother, your mother, our mother, is just amazing. She's, she's like the best spiritual mother ever. Okay, number eight. The various devotion types of prayer, especially the Liturgy of the Hours. I love the Liturgy of the Hours. If you don't know, the Liturgy of the Hours has morning, evening, night prayer are the three main ones. Then there's the Office of Readings, and then there's the Midday Prayers. There's three different Midday Prayers. And it's structured, and it's prayer. So if you don't know what to say sometimes, you pray the Liturgy of the Hours. I pray morning, evening, and night prayer every day, and it just gives a structure to my days that would not be there otherwise. Love the Liturgy of the Hours. If you want to know more, let me know. I can definitely tell you more. Okay, number nine, the Church is universal. It's one church. One church. Just one. One. Not like the 50 bajillion different ones all over the world. It's one church everywhere in the world. One 
church. And the Mass is the same Mass. The Eucharist is the same Eucharist. That just blows my mind sometimes. Just saying. And then, number 10, there's 2,000 years of history in the church. Over 2,000 years of history! There's good stuff, bad stuff, nice stuff, pretty stuff, beautiful stuff, gorgeous art, beautiful churches, great architecture, wonderful works of art, wonderful examples of how great things can be. Like, I mean, the church has done just about everything. It's been there through the entire thing. It's just like, the church has 2,000 years of history. That's more than our country has. That's more than like any country has. The church is, it blows my mind sometimes to think that the church has 2,000 years of unbroken history. So I love being Roman Catholic. If you're Roman Catholic, let me know in the comments why you love being Roman Catholic. And if you're not Roman Catholic, let me know if you want to know something about the Catholic Church or why you love being whatever faith you are. Because we're all pretty special, right? <laughs> anyway. Thank you for joining me for Amanda Chats. Be sure to subscribe to get notified of when there's new videos coming. I try to do one once a week. And if you'd like to support me, there's a Patreon link in the description box. I just started it, so there's like not much there yet, but you know, it'd be nice so that I can make sure that I get to these videos because I like doing videos. Anyway, thanks for joining me for Amanda Chats. Any ideas about what you want me to talk about next time? Let me know. Thanks very much.